This is a quick walkthrough to answer the question, what is the Open API specification? Uh, if you're you're looking at the homepage for the Open API initiative right here, uh, uh, according to the site, it's it's a broadly adopted industry standard for describing modern APIs. What does that mean? Let's dive in real quick. So here's a Open API uh, definition for a simple products API. Um, I have it. Uh, available here in YAML format, but you can work with it in JSON or YAML. Uh, an open API specification always starts with uh, what version of the open API spec is supported. Uh, this happens to just be a 3.0. Uh, the second portion of the specification describes information about the API. So a title, a description, and then what version of the API are we uh, defining here as part of the open API contract. So that gives us a little bit more detail about what the API is and what it does. And then we're given a servers block where we can list one or many servers where you can actually uh, engage with this API. I have a single URL to a variable because uh, the, the source of this API could change whether it's a development or a production server. And then we start getting into the details of the API itself and building on the base URL uh, we have for the server. Um, this just helps us better define paths. Here we have a slash products and then we can uh, articulate uh, HTTP methods that are available for this path. Here we have a post which allows us to add a product and we can uh, provide a summary a description and provide a unique identifier for this individual method for adding a product using the product's path. We can then provide tags that help us better organize and then we can provide a description of the body that's going to be submitted with this API request. So we can provide a description of the body, we can provide one or many content types that actually references a schema that allows us to understand what is expected when uh, this body is submitted. We can provide an example of what that will look like, and then we can define uh, the security for this API method, and we are using API keys to secure this. That's the request side of this API. We can also describe uh, the responses and specific HTTP status codes that are returned and again, providing a description, a media type, and then a reference to uh, the product schema. So this is all for just a, a single post that allows us to add a product. We can continue this for uh, getting all products, getting an individual product, as well as updating that product with a put, and then deleting that product with a delete giving us a vocabulary for describing the surface area of the request and the responses for all of our APIs. But then here at the bottom, we can better de define the actual schemas we're using. So that reference above for each of those API requests are just referencing this product schema that using JSON schema helps us describe the properties of our product. So the identifier, the name, the description, image, URL, and the other details that we can expect with this API. So the open API provides this vocabulary for us to define the underlying objects, as well as how those are accessed using the web uh, via a variety of paths, providing us with a machine readable contract that we can then use to drive other stops along the API lifecycle such as documentation, uh, mock servers, contract testing, performance security, and other stops along the API lifecycle. So hopefully that gives you a quick intro into what OpenAPI is and what it does and how it can help you better define your APIs and collaborate and communicate around what those APIs do.